Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, if you are not a diehard wrestling fan in 2024, I don't know what to tell you. Wrestling is at an all-time high, and the competition around all major wrestling promotions is kind of balanced, so there is a little bit of a power struggle going on. Join me, King Ricky Rose, and Nate the and Great from the Braced for Impact podcast as we discuss this newly formed balance of power within the pro wrestling world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is episode 365, Power Struggles of Kings of the Rings podcast, exclusively here on WrestleAddict Radio, and it starts right now. And hello, everybody. Welcome again to Kings of the Rings podcast. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us again for another episode of Kings of the Rings podcast, the award nominated Kings of the Rings podcast. Yes, that's right, folks. If you haven't heard, KOTR has been nominated for best wrestling podcast by the Sports Podcast Awards. Make sure you please like, share, subscribe. And most importantly for right now, give us a vote by clicking the first link in the description below of the this podcast again i am your host king ricky rose uh with me this week one of my brethren from the wrestle Attic radio podcast network he is the host of the brace for impact wrestling podcast covering all things impact well formerly impact and now revamped to tna ladies and gentlemen nate the effing great how are you sir it is good to hear those letters TNA back in the fold again. <laughs> it's it's a beautiful weekend. I will also say this that I think it was about I think it was not this past weekend, but the weekend before uh, there was a show uh, House of Glory. There we go. They actually oh, yes. had yeah they actually had their show named Brace for Impact. So I had to make sure to let them know, hey, it's fine. I'm not suing for royalties. I'm one of those guys who believes that we can work together as a wrestling family and do cool stuff. So by all means, plus they had Josh Alexander on the social. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Just do what you got to do. <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to use the Brace for Impact or the Impact name at, as well now, but it's pretty much gone in and of itself. Funny thing about House of Glory that I found out today. Uh, so they have decided to start selling their heavyweight championship belt, like replicas of it. Really? Mm -hmm. It's a nice looking belt. Not the. It's it's a nice. It's one of those things. Like if you are a true belt collector, uh, like I tell myself I am, but I'm not. You know, I don't have the money <laughs> to call myself a true belt collector. But I do have several that are hanging around this uh, this place where I stay. Um, the House of Glory one is something that you would like get just to say you have it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's kind of like a clout thing almost. You're like, oh yeah, I got the, I got the WWE Championship, the European title, and the House of Glory replica title. Like it's kind of like this really random rare find. You know what I mean? Well, now that you put it into the folds, I'm gonna be looking up at this belt and seeing how much this thing is actually gonna be. Because if it's my price range, I might actually buy it. <laughs> it's I think I think pre sales going at th uh, four hundred, so it's, that's up for you. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cheese of titles don't listen. I agree. The cheese of title would be absolutely hysterical, um, especially if it comes with cheese its but I don't think it does. Um, but listen, if you're a true belt collector, like a House of Glory title be great. I also want like I was talking about this earlier with uh with one of our other co-hosts, Kay, uh talking about um talking with them about like what new belt I'm gonna get for WrestleMania. Cause I will be in Philly for WrestleMania. I'm probably Ooh. yep, yep, yes, it's great time. And so more than likely uh I'm going to be purchasing my my Airbnb or reserving my Airbnb. Um for for all that fun stuff to happen and go along nhl and wwe are collabing for replica titles allegedly allegedly <laughs> we will definitely see how that goes but uh, speaking of alleged stuff and a little bit of breaking news the first thing we're talking about today is something that came up on socials all over the place regarding wwe 2k24 this photo that you see if you're watching us on video has popped up all over the place uh, on all of their socials with WWE 2K24 
one twenty two twenty four. Ladies and gentlemen, that is this upcoming Monday. Uh, as you guys know, WWE two K. Uh, series has been around for literally about a decade at this point, uh, giving us a lot of great highlights, uh, like a lot of their famous story modes, you know, the beat up John Cena edition, uh, Rey Mysterio story mode. There's a couple of times where you can go through the history of WrestleMania or the history of the Attitude Era, uh, another great modes. It recently brought back GM mode for the last couple of years, uh, a mode that I play a lot, a lot of. Uh, they do a, their creation suite. It's pretty much unmatched between anything that they do and recently in the past couple of years wwe's 2k um game has come out around wrestlemania which is a total shift because used to come out in the fall now they move the back to align with wrestlemania which from a business perspective is a great marketing move now there has been nothing said until you know couple of hours before this recording about the wwe 2k franchise nothing has been leaked not even a cover art or anything. So my, my question for you, uh, uh, Nate, is, is this here. What could we be expecting this upcoming Monday with regards to WWE 2K24? So I think that it's going to be, if the past has shown us anything, is that they have definitely learned from their mistakes from 2K20. Because that That's for was, sure. that was one of the biggest disappointments, as well as the biggest shit show that I think I've seen as far as video games go. But as far as this goes, I don't know what else you can really do. I mean, we've had people in our Discord chat. Definitely check that out if you get a chance, especially nowadays. Oh, jeez. I mean, last game night, I, baby, game night. It's oh, we got so much planned for that. Um, but speak. Speak of that, it's uh, I just don't know what to really think about this because we've had people suggest you know ideas for what could happen, uh, possibly like a Bray Wyatt legacy uh storyline being put in there, which I think would be great. I think that'd be a great way to you know honor like great Bray Wyatt. Um, I know that there's some people that are just saying, like, oh, we want this back in wrestling games, we want this back in wrestling games, and there's always so much that they can do before they just completely run out of ideas. So I think right now it's just all going to depend on how well they can make this work. Cause I mean, the fact that they're doing this now in spring instead of in the fall might concern me a little bit because they might be rushing it, but I'm hoping that's not the case. I, I don't think they're rushing it because they've been in this cycle for a couple of years now. So now it just happens to be kind of a norm for them. Um, there was that Fred's is right. There was a picture of a referee uh, shirt posted was the next thing that they posted. I don't know what in the world that means. And I think it was a shirtless referee sh uh, stick as well um, is interesting. The Bray Wyatt thing would also be something worth considering. Maybe they do a special edition Bray Wyatt because they usually do multiple editions. Or, sure. uh, which is always a great thing to have. Uh, my big thing that I would really want is just a more improved GM mode. Uh, in particular, because uh, I'm a big GM mode guy. I I've got a long-standing GM mode. Like my, G I'm so serious with GM mode because I've been playing with one of our one of our good friends of a show, Sir Charles, on PlayStation. Uh, via PlayStation Share, but like we have a running like Excel sheet for our rosters, who's champions, who the like. I take this very seriously. I've literally played GM mode for like, a, like I wasted a Saturday playing GM <laughs> mode. <laughs> okay, and that wasn't even time wasted uh, whatsoever. So I want to see some revamps of GM mode, in particular online co-op for GM mode. Because it's clear, it's not an online mode, but it needs. I would love online co-op. I'd also love cross-platform play for GM mode and just get real crazy with it. Uh, but for this upcoming Monday, I'm going to temper my expectations here. I think we are just getting a cover athlete. That's yeah. what I think we're getting. Yeah, no, I think that's a safe bet. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're getting the cover athlete reveal, which is perfectly fine. We'll know more about the games in the upcoming months. Again, perfectly fine. Cause by the time this game comes out, it's going to sell like crazy at WrestleMania. I think that's the timing with it. Um, be that as it may, since we both agreed that as a cover athlete, I'm going to give it to you again, Nate, since you're the only one here next to me. Um, <laughs> who's the cover athlete? 
I think it's going to be Cody. I think that it's going to be somebody who's been really prominent throughout the year. And honestly, this has been a really good Cody year. Mm-hmm. And God, th- this would be one of those things where it would be the biggest tease if they made him the cover of the game and then not have him win the title at WrestleMania. That would be one of those things where like, you cannot be serious. You cannot do that to him twice in a row. This cannot be a twice in a lifetime deal, but between, between Cody, I think also you could do, maybe you could do Jey Uso. I think he'd be like the second best one, or maybe LA Knight would be another one that you could put on there. Um, it's usually one of the most prominent stars, but they've already done Roman Reigns. So I think that he's out of the mix. They've done John Cena. So I think he's out of the mix. Uh, Randy Orton is out of the mix. AJ Styles is out of the mix. I think that they definitely try to make sure that it's somebody that's a big name, but somebody that they haven't really done. Yeah. Um, it's not Gunther Fretz. As much as you love Gunther, it's not going to be. Oh, that. Yeah. Maybe in a couple of years, but not in a couple of years. You, you know, when you're thinking of a cover, you're thinking of like company guys and big faces. Uh, you know, you had your Cena's, your Randy's, your Punk's. These guys, Stone Cold was a cover once. Um, these guys were all big faces of the company. Rey Mysterio, huge face for the company, huge face for wrestling in and of itself. I agree with Cody. Seth has been a cover already. Um yes. Roman has also been a cover. Becky was a cover. Roman and Becky were the same cover, and that went that was a disaster every year. Um Bray would be great, you know, post posthumous thing, which would be great. The Rock has also been a cover, by the way. I my front runner's Cody. Um, because he's the perfect face for your company right now. This also solidifies that Cody would win at Romania in some way, shape, or form. Because you can't have your cover athlete of your of your video game lose on your biggest show. No. Which would scare me. So like why would you put Cody on there? Because that kind of to me, you know, being a market. So I think that gives it away. It gives away the finish. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, I, I it's a toss up, but like Cody, I don't know who else would it be, but Cody would be my front runner. I think Taker was a cover once as well. I almost said Taker. Goldberg's been a cover. Sting was a special edition. Um, yeah, it's it, it might be Cody. I don't, I don't know anybody. Charlotte? Uh, Charlotte could be a cover. <laughs> I feel like the internet world would be burning a little bit because of that because i think they're kind of sick of charlotte I, mean, she, I, got, I, I get sympathy for charlotte she got injured when she shouldn't have been oh um i know you said face but at the same time she could still fit the bill because she is kind of the more popular of the the um what about rhea ripley i think she might be a great cover the mommy edition yeah no she would be a great cover um if all the four, if the mommy edition, yeah. I'm just imagining. I think that's going to be a DLC for 24 now. Of course. If all the four horsewomen were still together in the same company, I would do a four horsewomen edition because that would be oh, fantastic. Boy, yeah. You're missing one person, um, and that would be a giant conflict, but I would love for that to happen. Uh Maybe Jinder. He's on a streak right now. <laughs> I mean, He's a hot he had, guy. He had a, a pretty uh, a match. It was a fi- it was a fine match. Um, the <laughs> Arch Troop is also could be a great one. The Arch oh, Troop edition. Oh, man, that's a good one, Fretz. Uh, I, I will say if, if he is not the cover this Monday, I will be sad. But at the same time, it's like okay, Arch Troop for twenty twenty five. Yeah, right Next. now I, I I'm 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 down for the Maharaja edition of WWE two K. <laughs> I'm all for it. I am I'm very much all for it. Or actually, fuck it. Do a new day. Ooh, new day would be really good. A new day edition would be amazing. Oh. Actually, the sh- the story showcase mode for a new day would be pretty damn good, actually. Got, they, you've never had a tag team on the cover of of a video game. It'd be great. Mellow's not big enough to be on the cover, Fred. Now you're just grasping at straws. Oh <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that would be it would be crazy. Was HBK a cover? Um, I don't 
No, he was. He was. It he was, was a cover, H, right? Him and Triple H, uh, 2009, I want to say, when they started oh. doing like, the tag team deal. Oh, okay. Was that under a 2K thing, though? Is that no. Where? Ah, no. see, I'm, I'm going for 2K only. I don't think 2K09 exists, but I don't I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I was still in college when that happened. Oh. <laughs> no, no, it's still been under the SmackDown versus Raw. I figured. Face. Yeah. So, so I, I mentioned to see what happens. Uh, you know, I'll be glued to see what goes on. I'm telling you, it's probably a cover app, cover app lead. And if they're smart, they'll just debut it on Raw. Uh, speaking of other big news coming out of WWE, now the last time we were here, the last time we had the show, we discussed in particular that TNA was move, was changing their the name of their pay per views to premium live events because they have the streaming service, so on and so forth. And at that time, Triple H had announced that he had a big announcement. That upcoming Thursday, uh, we all thought was a TNA related because they changed the premium live events. There was a lot of speculation. It just so happened that he's announcing money in the bank going to Canada. Not only money in the bank in Canada that weekend, they're also going to have 4th of July weekend. So, you know, happy Canada Day, guys. You guys get money in the bank. Uh, hey. Yeah. So 4th of July weekend in the States. Uh, in particular, Friday, July 5th will be that SmackDown. Saturday, July 6th will be money in the bank. And Sunday, 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 NXT gets NXT Heatwave. It is a two premium live event weekend for WWE as a whole, as a brand. I'm very interested if this is just an experiment or are we going to continue to do this with the big show? Not well, it's a big show, but with the major show. (laughs) It it popped in my head as soon as I said it. With the major show being the Saturday show and the Sunday show kind of being like a matinee show. I'm very interested to see how kind of this... uh, this fair is in particular for NXT SmackDown and Money in the Bank. You're not going to have an issue. Money in the Bank is essentially the fifth major, no matter what anybody tries to tell you. I'm interested to see how NXT fares on this weekend, being like the matinee show, but like, oh, quote unquote, like, you know, the true marks will stay around for and how well uh, they do. But what are your thoughts, uh, Nate, on this announcement of Money in the Bank weekend in Toronto? Well, first of all, Triple H, stop being a tease. We knew that was <laughs> happening on Thursdays. And I was so hoping that we were going to have like a TNA WWE kind of like working partnership. I, I mean, did they're, too. Working with New, they're working with New Japan, so why not? Um, honestly, I think that this is going to be a good weekend, especially for Canada. I mean, you got Money in the Bank, which is definitely one of the big now part of the big five that WWE is doing. I would agree. And you have, I mean, NXT going back to Canada. Need I really say more? I mean, DIY, Revival, NXT TakeOver. Toronto. Toronto. I mean, what do I really need to say more than that? I. It's going to be fire. It's going to be really good. And there's a lot of possibilities that can really go into this. Do they go for like the heel? Do, do they give Dominic the briefcase finally? <laughs> maybe do they give it to Sami Zayn? That would be Oof. kind of an interesting deal. I mean, they're, I feel like Sami Zayn is going to be a world champion within the next year or two. It's just a question of whether he's going to win money at the bank or if he's going to win the Rumble next year. That's my thing. Yeah, Sam is a good candidate. I mean, when you talk about NXT TakeOver Toronto, you also had uh, Mickey James versus Asuka, I think it was that card. That's right. As yeah. well as one of the most, one of the best openers of a TakeOver at a time. I should really do like a, a TakeOver um, retrospective, like Patreon exclusive or something. Something I, I have to think about that. Uh, but you had the Perfect 10 Ty Dillinger versus Bobby Roode to start the show. Rude came out with an all children's choir singing "Glorious." That it's an lit- <laughs> awesome beginning to that to that pay per view at the time. Absolutely awesome. I literally just said, now all we need is Bobby Rude to his peer, like he's walking on water, and then we'll have the greatest <laughs> <laughs> the greatest entrance of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean Sammy winning in Toronto would be fantastic. It's just a matter of if he's there or Kevin winning the money in the bank in Toronto. Like any Canadian oh, sure. winning in Toronto would be would be absolutely wild. But more on that when we get there, because that is literally like six months away. We've oh, got to get yeah. through Mania. And once Mania hits, I feel like the entire landscape of WWE, no pun intended, is going to absolutely change for the better, oh, yes. by the way. For the better. 2024 is a great year. Uh, but speaking of changing Hell yeah. for the better, <laughs> this is the what greatest. an absolute 
bonkers Saturday it was last weekend. Uh, TNA did their first ever or did their first pay-per-view under the TNA brand again called Hard to Kill. How fitting. I was able to fortunately be able to watch it alongside some of my WrestleMania Radio uh, brethren in the Discord, and we had a ball of a time. And now, leading up to this, TNA was boasting about how they had some big surprise, some big contract signing, uh, and everything. The show went off essentially for the most part without a hit. There were some TNA things being TNA. Uh but everything looked great. Uh, everybody, most for for the most part, all the all the uh, matches were were top notch and and really really good. It's it's making me become a TNA fan. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's making me become a TNA fan. Their belts look fantastic. Uh, and so Moose ends up winning the whole damn thing. Um, wins the TNA Heavyweight Championship, rightfully so. Moose has been there for ages and ages. You got to give it to somebody. Give it to Moose. Um, and he. He very quickly after the match gets mic checked by the man formerly known as Dolph Ziggler. Nick Nemeth shows up, super kicks the crap out of Moose, runs into the crowd, rips off his shirt, and reveals that he has officially signed with TNA. Now, previously, two weeks ago, he was at New Japan Wrestle Kingdom, attacked David Finlay, the global heavyweight champion. And said that he wants to go after him in New Japan as well. So Dolph Ziggler, the man formerly known as Dolph Ziggler, a surefire WWE Hall of Famer somewhere down the road when he's done wrestling. And got to give the man his flowers. He's a fantastic performer. Uh, I challenge anybody to find a bad Dolph Ziggler match. And I'll be waiting for a while. <laughs> you know, uh, in my in my own personal opinion, I thought his... He got a very unceremonious release for someone who had a lot of accolades as his time in WWE. Um, and I kind of felt for him for that because it felt like they kind of just threw him to the curb. And I, I understand why, but I felt like they could have he could have been sent off in a better light from a television and storyline perspective. Uh, but I have a feeling Dolph Ziggler is going to go on this classic run that we've seen throughout the years. Cody did it. Drew did it. Matt Cardona's in the middle of doing it. Trinity has done it. Sasha Banks, Mercedes Bernardo, has been doing it as well. I think we're uh, Deanna Perazzo to an extent did it. Um, and we're going to talk about Deanna a little bit later. I think he's the next big guy who's going to run rampant on the indies in his post WWE release and just number one bet on himself. And create a much bigger aura around him than what was than what was going on with him in WWE towards the end. So first and foremost, congratulations, Nick Nemeth. I think Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler, just made TNA watchable again, and it comes on tomorrow on Thursday. I know that I have Access TV. It does come on tomorrow. I might be watching it. Uh, but but for you, uh, Mister Nate, the, the TNA guy for for Wrestle Addict Radio, how do you feel about this? So after watching the show on discord with you guys, it was literally one of those things where after we saw Moose win the title, it was a, it was the legit shock of the night for me. And I was like, okay, this is going into a different deal. And then we see the Titan Tron change. And then we see the red and then we see the name Nick Nemeth. I'm thinking to myself, wait, he's not. (laughs) As soon as I see him, I'm like, Oh my God, this is not the greatest TNA sighting. But right now, current day, this is one of the best that they had. Absolutely. To, to work for that. And the fact that, you know, TNA is now in a point where they need to have that kind of star power. They need to have that kind of recognition from modern day fans to be like, oh, hey, that's Dolph Ziggler. What's he going to do? Have that kind of deal where they have the familiarity and to kind of bridge that gap between, you know, TNA fans and modern wrestling fans that are on the indies or some of the dumb people that are on their Twitters wanting to troll everybody (laughs) to really look at it and be like, okay, so there's something special here with TNA. Let's watch and see what that is. And hard to kill was the best first step. Seeing Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth be in that ring 
and hearing the crowd reaction literally go crazy and then him doing basically a Hulkamania deal, ripping off that shirt and showing he's part of TNA. I'm just like, oh my God, this is, this is amazing. This, it didn't, it didn't make me cry, but it was just one of those things where I was just giddy, happy and like, yes, (laughs) this, this is the great best first step for all of the bad stuff that they had to deal with. And I, TNA went through so much shit. I mean, Vince Russo multiple times, Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, Dixie Carter, Mm -hmm. the whole owl anthem deal. They went through so much deal. It is like the event said, TNA is hard to kill. They have survived longer than WCW wish that they could survive. And they are just continuing to find a way to strive and still some find a way to be relevant. And this is another one of those moments where they did that. Yeah, man. I mean, I've always said that, and I've said this for years at the, on doing this show, TNA is the roach that survives the apocalypse. Somehow, some way, they always find a way to make it, to be relevant, and still do something good with their time. And I think there's a big difference here. Because at this point, with all this good, good faith coming towards TNA right now, they can easily start to chip away at AEW's uh, perceived number two spot in uh, in the pro wrestling world and sports and entertainment. Uh, they they're, they really could because they are starting to balance out the power in pro wrestling. WWE's might be your network good, might always be number one, but that two and three and even four NWA still has a TV deal with CW coming. Um, by the way, (laughs) as of right, as of right now, it is still, it's still happening as of right now. It is still happening. Um, there's a, that two, three, four in American pro wrestling companies is upper ground. I can even throw MLW in there with riddle signing. Uh, you know, there's a, it's a fun time to be an American wrestling fan in 2024. It is absolutely insane. Uh, but the difference with TNA and their signings, uh, and I, you might agree with me, but with now with Nick Nemeth versus when the, you know they first came around, Nick Nemeth is still in his prime. When TNA was grabbing people, maybe outside of Kurt Angle, because Kurt Angle got let go for obvious drug use and other reasons, and maybe even Sting for but Nick Nemeth can still go at a very high rate, I would say for another five years. You know, unlike some of the signings that they had, you know, the first go around from other big names who might have been on their last leg. I mean, hell, Foley came back for no reason. Flair was there. (laughs) (laughs) You know. The nasty boys were even there. (laughs) Exactly. So I I think they're, they're figuring it out. And Dolph Ziggler is the best get that they were probably ever going to get. Uh for them. So congratulations to Dolph. Congratulations to TNA. I might start watching. Not going to lie. Also <laughs> on that show, uh, something that we do need to talk about. Uh, she, she came out in a limo. No one knew who the hell she was. Um, and so you looked at her and like, Oh crap. It's Dana Brooke now known as Ash by elegance. Not a fan of the name, but she's there. Uh, Dana Brooke or yeah, or Ash by elegance as we call, as we'll call her as what her name wants to be. She recently went on a podcast and talked about how, she is happy for her release because she essentially felt that she was sidelined by WWE, which I I, I can understand. And in fact, they didn't really see potential in her, so she never got a chance to show us what she could really do. This is a common thread that happens with a lot of people who were released. They felt that they were sidelined. They felt that there was nothing. They couldn't show what they can do uh, in, in the pro wrestling world. And she might be right, and this is her chance right now in TNA to prove WWE wrong. This she could potentially again go on a run that show that shows the rest of the wrestling world what her worth is. And by all accounts, give her a shot. I felt her NXT run at the end was kind of cut short, unfortunately. Budget cuts, whatever you want to call that. Uh but Ash by Elegance, Dana Brooke, I'm rooting for her. Um, I've always felt like she had a lot of potential. I was able to meet her once in Orlando for WrestleMania. Very nice person. Very kind person. Uh, so all the best with her. However, with that being said, she is in arguably the best women's division in all of pro wrestling year in and year out in the knockouts division. So if she's going to prove her worth and that she, you know, belongs in pro wrestling, this is the best place 
for her to be in the knockouts division. Uh, Nate, what are your thoughts on the other TNA signing of Dana Brooke, uh, formerly known as Dana Brooke, now known as Ash by Elegance? I think this is a very interesting get. And I know a lot of people have been making jokes about her appearance at the show, how she almost I mean, she does you. look like timeless Tony Storm. But one of the things that I have definitely heard, and I'm going to do a quick shout out to uh, another podcaster, uh, Solomon Monster Sounds Off. He actually made a really good point about this, is that she hasn't done anything yet. So give yeah. her a chance to at least bring that character out before we judge whether or not she is the wish version of timeless Tony Storm. Because when I looked at her, I didn't think to myself, oh, that's a knockoff of Timeless Tony Storm. I looked at it more as like, okay, she kind of thinks of herself as kind of like this pampered, kind of richy kind of deal, which is different from what Timeless Tony Storm is doing. Timeless Tony Storm, let's face it, she is basically being the Marilyn Monroe of wrestling. She's being golden era Hollywood, yes. She is she's being F she's being freaking amazing at it. Um, but like I said, we don't know what Ash is gonna do. And we don't know what her character is like until we see probably, you know, TNA tomorrow night <laughs> or maybe with before the months are over. We don't know. But honestly, I think it's a good pickup. She was one of the reasons why the 24-7 title was even relevant to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> like that last strand of being like, oh, we got to do something. Oh, let's put it on Data Brooke and see what happens. It's like, you know what? She actually made that title more prestigious than what it needed to be. Which was exactly what Nikki Cross did, which was trash it. Yeah. But no, she created some really good moments with that. She was given something, and she she took crap and made something really nice with it. So yeah, she she I, has character with her, and I think there yes. is she has character. I, she's been entertaining in multiple ways. When she was part of Titus Worldwide, and she was like the secretary or the stack girl, I thought she was perfect. Oh, yeah. Um. So she has potential. It's one of those things where, like, she doesn't know her character yet. Like, Cody went on the Indies because Cody didn't know who he was. Cardona kind of didn't know what he was. You know, he hadn't found, like, the thing that stuck with him. And I think Ash by Elegance or Ash might be able to find it in this. You know, pro wrestling is an art form. It's all And character-wise, it's all about experimentation. You may go through a lot of characters. Seth goes through a character every two years. Um, you know, it's so. true. <laughs> and eventually you find one that sticks. Uh, and hopefully, you know, during her run on in TNA, uh, she will find a, a character that sticks for her. Uh, but let's move along here to the other huge thing that happened in the States at the same time as TNA Hard to Kill. Jack Perry looking like Will Masterson, a.k.a. Hyde from that 70s show. Say what you want about him. I totally agree with you. Um, shows up at a New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong event in America and rips up his AEW contract. Okay, remember, the last time we saw Jack Perry, he was probably getting his ass beat by CM Punk at All In in Wembley. We all know what happened there, and he hasn't really been seen since. He now shows up as a grizzly journeyman, kind of looks like, oh, he just, he, he looks rough. Okay, and it seems like, storyline-wise, as I completely believe this will work, and there's no way AEW fired him, because we would have known by now, Um I think storyline wise, he is now going to do some new Japan stuff. I think from a PR perspective, great move as well. Uh, get a little bit of heat off him. Say, say what he has to prove himself. You're like, Oh, he's not with AEW. He's with new Japan. It's their problem. Now though, the problem is we already know you guys have a working relationship. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that is an issue. Be it as it may, I'm interested to see what happens here. Uh, the AEW New Japan partnership is, was a lot better than the AEW and Impact partnership by leaps and bounds. Uh, so I, I don't know where they're going to go with this. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting to me as well. Now, I'll before I kick it to you, uh, it's interesting to me as well, Nate, that this was allegedly one of your pillars of AEW. And now you're going to let your pillar go. And he's going to be in New Japan and not even, quote unquote, be affiliated with AEW. We're letting him. I don't. Mm. It's it's interesting. Interesting. And if he if, and my other thing is, if he is totally going to be New Japan in storyline and totally not with AEW, they've got to stick to that. He can't show up on Dynamite. He can't show up on Collision. 
No one watches Rampage. I'm sorry. No people watch Rampage. Um, he can't show up like he can't show up on Ring of Honor or anything like that. Make him run a New Japan schedule and stick to it. Do not let him be away for six months or something. Let him be away for a whole year until All In again at Wembley, and then have him come back or do something wild. But if we, if we're gonna stick to this, like really, really stick with it and run it for a very long time. What are your thoughts on? Uh, on Hyde from that 70s show now going to Japan. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a transition. <laughs> um, I mean, we already know about the accusations, so we're just going to leave that out there. But as far as uh, Jack Perry and New Japan, this was an interesting move. And the fact that he calls himself a uh, scapegoat from that uh, armband that he had on there is a <laughs> very yeah. interesting choice. Mm-hmm. You bring up some really good points. That's very hard for me to kind of, you know, build off of that because again, it's another situation where it's like, you know, we see him here. What's he going to do? Honestly, I agree with a lot of what you said. Just keep him off of AEW. Honestly, I would bring him back for Forbidden Door, mm-hmm. and maybe like the first thing that he does is just knocks down a door because for me, <laughs> just just why not? Um, it's going to be interesting to see what he does in New Japan. A lot of people are probably going to say, like, oh, he's a heel. He'll probably join Bullet Club. I'm thinking, I don't see that. Bullet I Club really, has enough problems. Yeah. Um, they're almost getting into NWO 2000 levels of this is not good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, honestly, you could also have Jack Perry run his own faction. Let him have, like, call it Jungle Cruise, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean. Like, let, let him have fun over in Japan and he might get sued by Disney, but Jungle Cruise will be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he could spell it differently. Maybe it's like a with, with Jungle Cruise, but the E's got a little asterisk or whatever. The little no, things. that would that'd be like that'd be called like Crusade or something like that. I don't even know. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a linguistics major. Uh, but good luck to Jack Perry wherever his, his AEW free life takes them because AEW has a little bit of issues of Rome, but nothing, no issues right now with Deanna Peraza, who made her shocking debut um, to uh, AEW on Collision, I believe, if that is correct. She showed up, <laughs> I believe she showed up, oh no, she showed up, not a, she showed up um, she showed a couple up weeks on ago Di- on yeah, Dynamite. She showed up on Dynamite, and then yeah. she had her debut this past week, I believe. Which is very interesting timing because the 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 um the organization she just left TNA had their show at the time, so I don't know how many people saw uh, how she did. But Deanna Perazzo, one of those people who was an NXT talent, got released by NXT and WWE, went on the run, went on went on an indie run, kind of refound herself, kind of found her character, um, and has become kind of. Has kind of found her voice in the pro wrestling world, and good for her. Very, very good for her. The AEW Women's Division needs somebody like Diana Perazzo. Uh, essentially, pretty much needs somebody, but it's not Britt Baker, <laughs> um, right? To, to help move this women's division along in some way, shape, or form. I think AEW is probably the best spot for her right now. Um, and I'm I'm interested to see what she does. With this run in essentially a bigger spotlight because the AEW Women's Division needs as much help as possible. Um, and having a former multi-time knockouts champion is a big get for them. Yes. Very, definitely. very big get for them. But now, is she going to be able to do stuff with it? Is she going to get some freedom? Like, how much are you going to push her? Because right now, I'm pushing her to the moon. you, you got to, like... You need to build another star because your your bigger star that you were supposed to get left for WWE in Jade Cargill. So, Deanna, there's I think there's a lot of responsibility on Deanna Peraza's shoulders mm-hmm. uh, because you, she, if done correctly, she can do wonders for AEW and that women's division. What are your thoughts on? You're losing Deanna from TNA, but what are your thoughts on this? Date? So, there was a glass ceiling that she could only hit in TNA and she surpassed that. She really became somebody who just did everything that there was to do in TNA. So the only thing that she could do was get onto 
a be on a bigger company. Be on was one that's she got a ever really the uh, TNA World Champion? No. Okay, no, so you only got she only got as high as knockouts. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the only other person that I could see that could have been TNA champion that was female would be Jordan Grace right now because mm-hmm. the one who would who was the first TNA World Champion is basically erased from history and. Spot up, and you know what? And that literally, was, like wrestling in Mexico, like that's not even hyperbole. Yeah. She's literally, yeah. she's literally wrestling in Mexico. And appa- apparently, she's divorced from uh, Daga. Poor guy. She did. She did. That also happened as well. <laughs> but um, game back, game back a track here. Uh, having Diana Perazzo on AEW is a big get. And I also know that she dealt with a little bit of. I wouldn't say backlash, but some fan lash, we'll call it. To where I like that. I like that fan lash. Well, it's it's stupid because there were people that were critiquing her on her body and how she was working. There were some people that were just really being very mean to her. And apparently this hit her really hard to the point where she had to, you know, let it all out. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as she got she composed herself, she actually went on social media and she said, after, you know, Crying, crying about this, I found a way to finally just, you know, rebu- rebuild myself and realize that, you know, I am who I am. And that's the way it is. And I think she also did like a little shoot afterwards, to which I would lo- love to have just gone onto social media and be like, you know what? I have never found Diana Perrazzo, you know, talentless. I've never felt her yeah. unattractive. She is a huge star ready to break out in AEW. And like you said, there was a big void that was needed to be filled when Jade Cargill left. And Deanna Perrazzo, is she going to fill that void? Well, I mean, it's still early to really tell that. But she is one of those people, along with Athena, where if they were able to finally decide, hey, let's get the belt off of her in Ring of Honor, let's put her on, T- on AEW television – Hey, she could do wonders for that division as well. But for some reason, TK is not allowing that to happen. I don't know why. I mean, it's not the, wor- it's not the worst thing that he's done in the last week, but mm-hmm. it's high up there at this point. Um, yeah, I do agree to the point where you said, you know, push Dion to the moon. Just don't to. go. Just don't be quick about it. I know that the immediate thing is that it's a, it's somebody who's new, so let's just put him right in the title picture. No, let her build herself up, have a couple of pay-per-view matches, and then get to that point. And honestly, there are still going to be some other stars that are going to be able to be able to hang with Tony Storm before Deanna Peraza gets to her. Honestly, I feel like Deanna Peraza and Tony Storm, they will headline a show this year. Mm-hmm. I just don't think you need to do it right away. Give it time. Let Deanna tell a story. And build up to that point where she can say, hey, I'm ready to face you and I'm ready to become the next AEW Women's World Champion. I agree with that. Um, And also, it's no coincidence that she debuts on AEW and people start attacking her online. It's 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 no coincidence whatsoever. And that's that's shameful um, and shouldn't happen to somebody who, for all intents and purposes, for what I've known, uh, number one, has been through a lot. And number two is also still a sweetheart uh, from everybody that's really met her and interacted with her uh, for for the most part. Uh, I do agree if you build her up. I think the best spot for her right now also to start the gain traction is that it's going to hurt some people's feelings, but take the TBS title. Oh, man, Ricky, you are <laughs> you are opening you are opening up. Uh, slow part of Pandora's box, not the full port, but at the same time, I can see that. I, I can definitely see where you're coming from with that. Because turn, turn her heel. She's a great heel. Take it off of Julia. Do something with the TBS title. Oh shit. That's right. For yeah. some reason, I thought it was Chris Statlander. <laughs> no. Damn it. Take it off uh, Julia, you know, and, and work, work with Julia Hart. I think that's a great way for her. Cause like her, the virtuoso character is a little bit more of a heel than as a face. You know, um, take it off Julia and work from there. And I think that's perfect. Ideally, I'd be I'd do champion versus champion at one point, but that's for down the road if I'm the booker, but I'm not. Uh, but best of luck to Diana Perrazzo yes. and what she does is listen, we need us. We need great women's wrestling all around. Like yes. I need I'm, I'm, and we're we're almost getting there. We're all, almost getting there. But mm. excuse me, we have some bookers 
who have issues, uh, like fighting with other talent on <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> on, <laughs> on social media. All right, let's break this down a little bit, folks, for, for everybody who hasn't been around in the last couple of weeks. The Rock showed up on one of the first Raws of the year, California. Uh, it was ad- advertised that there was going to be a special person, and the first person that came out was Jinder Mahal a special guest and everybody was kind of upset when the rock came out and and uh pretty much ran down gender was what he was supposed to do but next week <laughs> the next week uh gender hall interrupted Seth Rollins and got himself a championship match uh for this past Monday night on Raw which was a fine match whatever uh it did what it was supposed to do he main evented Raw, by the way. So as soon as the or within a less than twenty four hours after the Seth and Jinder segment, which Jinder attacked Seth and got the championship match and all of that, Tony Khan, in his infinite wisdom as the self proclaimed new Vince McMahon and greatest Booker of all time, as he said the day after Vince McMahon retired initially, um, pretty much said that. <laughs> Did the funniest thing in wrestling is use stats to justify his talent over another talent. He went on to say in a public Twitter rant that Jinder hasn't won a wrestling match all since 2022 or whatever or something like that. And he gets a title shot. And how is he how is he a a viable person for the shot? Whereas Hook is 28 and one, and he's going to get a title shot, blah, 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 because he deserves it. Jinder Mahal, in his infinite wisdom, retweeted him and said, who the fuck is Hook? <laughs> I <laughs> love that. <laughs> and the internet world went ablaze. So this, for me, speaks to a giant problem that I have with Tony Khan, and I've probably mentioned before, and I'll probably mention until I'm blue in the face, or until he stops doing this. You are the owner, CEO, general manager, head booker, all the silly titles you give yourself on all of your press releases. You're all of that for not only one wrestling company, but two, technically, since you bought ROH and you did crap with it. Um, there is no reason... For you to be commenting on another company, I get it's WWE. There's no reason for you to be commenting on another company or another company's talent for any reason. You have you already have enough on your plate. And if you want to be, if you think you're the best booker ever and you're a new Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon never really publicly did this. <laughs> okay. Um, granted, Vince McMahon, I don't even think ran his own Twitter, um, but at some point you don't mention the other talent. <laughs> you don't mention the other company. Eric Bischoff did it, but Eric Bischoff had the balls to do it on TV, <laughs> you know, and that worked for a while until WWE stopped acknowledging it. But WWE lives rent free in Tony Khan's head, um, to his to his detriment, not only to his detriment, to his company's detriment, to his two companies' detriment. Tony Khan, at this point in time, will forever be a player two person in the world of pro wrestling at best. He hasn't grown up yet. He doesn't get, he's still trying this kid in the sandbox and is getting butt hurt over the littlest things and booking decisions of things that don't have to do with your company. It is, it's annoying. It's annoying because AEW turned five. I know going around here, but I don't care. AEW turned five. <laughs> Go for it. AEW turned five years old. And it sometimes it feels like it's run by a five-year-old in, in Tony Khan. Right. You know, um, especially I feel bad for a lot of people who had a lot of hope and may still have a lot of hope in AEW to see their hopes and dreams kind of dashed and diminished over and over and over again by a guy who can't seem to take his foot out of his mouth. It's it's like for all the good that AEW does, and they do do a lot of good. 
it gets overshadowed a lot by what their owner does publicly in public spaces that the IWC covers. On a positive note, Jinder Mahal main evented off of a Tony Khan rant, and that's actually great stuff. So, <laughs> it is. So, you know, th- there's also that. So, you know, it, it was bad for AEW and Tony Khan's a bad look, but great for WWE. Absolutely great. So you did something right, Tony. I guess it just so happened that it was not for your own company. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this? I, I'm done with my rant. I'm finished. But what are your thoughts on this, Nate, and the TK Jinder situation? So I think that this is all secretly a work and this is just a seed to <laughs> play the eventual matchup, which will be Jinder Mahal versus Tony Khan at the next forbidden door. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure people would love to see that matchup. I'd be one of them. I just see Tony Khan to try to do one punch and then Jinder Mahal is like, really? One colossus, boom, one, two, three, match over. I, I was going to go I, finger poke of doom. <laughs> no, no, Jinder would not go. Jinder, after this past Monday, he would not stoop that low. <laughs> he, 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 he would get he would get his he would get his lackeys to help him out, but no, he would not go down to finger poke of doom. Um, so top this off with the fact that this is the same guy who was so confident that his team was going to make the playoffs. He was already saying, "Hey, we got playoff tickets ready to go." And then when his team lost, they're like, oh, well, that um, that didn't work out so well. So, yeah, just Tony Khan needs to lay off the crack, lay off whatever the hell he's on, and just stop shooting his mouth off. Because, like you said, it's not helping the company at all. You look at everything that he has done, and – just because, yes, they're the competition. Yes, you want to showcase your tech guy's talent. You want to showcase your show. Doesn't mean you're try- that it's always going to work. Like you said, Eric Bischoff, he went on TV. He told the results just so that he can get people to fill in on his show. We don't have that option anymore. There's no way that you're going to be able to have somebody secretly sneak into a Monday Night Raw just to get the results and reveal them on Wednesday night. That doesn't even make sense that wow that's just really yeah, stupid. he would have to reveal he would have to reveal smackdown results and even then be too early because that can just change within two days exactly <laughs> but um i think this is one of the hard truths that i had loved AEW for what it was it was the alternative to where i could go and just enjoy wrestling mm-hmm. but with this and everything that has happened in the last, even like even the last two years alone, I think, with everything that happened with Tony Khan, CM Punk, the Elite, it just sours it so much. And this is just another example of them, of him literally not learning his lesson. You don't have to hinder the gender to get your point across. People are going to figure it out on their own that Jinder Mahal being WWE champion. Was not the best is business decision. Speak and for yourself. <laughs> okay, I know why they did it, but that being said, <laughs> um, it's just you know there were a lot of people that actually thought that Jinder was going to win, only to get it. Listen, only to lose. He only to got lose. close. <laughs> he was close. He got real yeah. close. I had, listen. That whole crowd. That whole crowd was sold on it, and as was I. As was I, but that was just me being a troll and a, a trolling <laughs> bar and wanting to see the world burn because I am an agent of chaos from time to time. <laughs> just, just like, just like we wanted, just, some people just wanted to see Goldberg beat the fiend just so they could see the whole world burn. And lo and behold, they did. This time around, the world was just like, you know what? We're a little cold for this. I don't think that we're going to warm up that fast. So let's just not mess with this right now <laughs> yeah and one thing that we have learned from this is that tony khan has found out the hard way he he effed around and found out but you do not hinder the gender because that gender train is iconic uh <laughs> it is at this point it is do very much the, so. Jind- the jindenberg <laughs> exactly don't hinder the jindenberg uh speaking of things that were a hindrance but not a bit hindrance what you're seeing here below is uh the modified Raw set for this week. Uh, Triple H came out and said, 
that there were a lot of modifications made uh, due to the very, very cold weather around the entire United States uh, that is going on. Uh, so they had to kind of modify the raw set. Uh, it seems right now that this is a temporary set um, based on everything. Uh, if you look at if you actually look at this photo, uh, if you're watching us on video, uh, the roof's very the roof is very, very low. Uh, on this and i i think that's the reason for the temporariness of of this raw set it's a very unique set i didn't know how i felt about it there are a couple of design things and i was like eh, i don't know but the it looks like the roof on this building is very small and they didn't have a lot of time to maneuver or move around or also a possibility of like not getting their trucks in due to a snowstorm and ice storms going around the united states uh but they came up with this modified version of the raw stage. Uh, so my question for you uh, there, Mr. Nate, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this stage? Uh, I mean, I, I guess... Feel this, I, I get it. I kind of have that same feeling too. I, you also have to remember that we just came off of a TNA show where they just started to bring back the tunnel entryway again. Yeah. So that was kind of one of those things where it's hard for me to say... I mean, it's like choosing between your kids at this point. Just mm. <laughs> which which one do you prefer more? Um, I think for a temporary use, hey, they finally do it something different. So yeah, I say let's see if it sticks around. Let's see if it works out. Um, I'm hoping that they do have a more solidified plan because yeah, it's it's re it's really rough to go through some of the shows and be like. Well, which one are we seeing? Oh, okay, we're seeing Raw. It's like, okay, we're going to see a Raw show. Nope, it's SmackDown. It's like, they're, they're the same exact sets. And it's better to have something different with the sets than something that's completely the same. So I'm hoping that they wise up and be like, okay, let's do something different for Raw. Let's do something for, different for SmackDown. Let's give it an identity like they, like we did back in the day. Yeah, when you when you saw the Raw set, you knew you were in sub for Raw. When you saw the SmackDown set, you were in for SmackDown. The one thing that's missing is brand identity, uh, and I think if especially if both brands are going to be on different networks, which they are probably going to be, um, yeah. you need a little bit more brand identity, which I think is always a good thing. By the way, shout out to my friend Arrowstream who has joined us again. Check out his Twitch page; uh, he does a lot of uh, e pro wrestling there. Or not EPO Wrestling, but he he is turning us into wrestling fans uh, via his Twitch stream. Check that out. Uh, nice. Yeah. No, he's he's a great guy. Met him at Comic-Con. Uh, absolutely awesome person. Please check out all of his stuff on Twitch and YouTube as well. Uh, but moving on from that, uh, the one thing that's constant about Raw and that should never change is the <laughs> greatness <laughs> that is our truth Coming off one of the most epic video packages of all time, our truth has been hustling people in the parking lot. I don't know how he did that in the winter storm. Uh, selling the <laughs> selling the Judgment Day merchandise. <laughs> um, but the knockoff merchandise. The knockoff is... merchandise and hustling people. Like I think the sky is the limit for our truth but where do you see this going? Like, where? When does this run stop? Because at some point, our truth is going to get become a giant baby face when Priest kicks him out or something. Like, how does this end for our truth? Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. With this because, <laughs> well, here's the crazy thing: is that our truth actually did an interview where apparently this segment with this whole entire thing was actually supposed to be done like sooner. Than what it was, oh. but apparently D main priest was the one that said, we, I think we have something here. Let's just continue on with this. Nice. Let's see where it goes. So major props to Damien priest for giving our truth more screen time, because yeah. that's what we definitely need on our wrestling is more. Our truth. You can never I have mean, enough. Our truth. No, no, I agree. Um, I want to say, at least before WrestleMania, I think is where this will end. And maybe we'll get a blow off match with our truth and Damian priest on pay-per-view. I don't think it's happening at WrestleMania. I think, and that's the weird thing is that what is going to happen at WrestleMania? Because it feels like there's two options. They can go with this. They could either go one, uh, Finn Balor and priest versus DIY for the tag titles, or mm. we could do, priest and balor which would also be 
completely fine. I'd be cool with that. So I don't see our truth and Damian Priest happening on a main stage like WrestleMania. Uh, I hate to say that it would probably happen at, well, it's not even fast lane. I don't even know what's between uh, elimination chamber. Well, I mean, there's elimination chamber, but isn't there like usually another show? They got between? rid of it. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. It'll happen on a big episode of Monday night raw. Why not? <laughs> I, I got to go with arrow stream. Here's in our comments. Thank you again, by the way. Uh, I think our truth messes up Priest's cash in. Like at, at this point in time, at this point in time, Damian Priest is not going to cash in successfully. And I think the best thing to happen right now is for him to lose the cash in. Is the him to for him to lose to our truth instead of that way. I think they kick our truth out for real, for real. He gets beat up. Our truth returns, screws over Damian Priest because he thinks Damian Priest is his friend, and that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> No. I'm just I'm just imagining him all being like, and I want all that money that I give you for my <laughs> blood, honor, honor, and blood and sweat that I put into this. Yeah, I Got can like- definitely see that. I can definitely see that happening. So much much love to Archie, but let's move along, folks. Uh, with all these different factions stuff going on, SmackDown has really become the land of opportunity, uh, in particular for pretty much any faction in WWE. But there is some cracks uh, in the damage control uh, faction right here, all all five women. This might be the biggest all women's faction ever, which is something to, which is a testament uh, to to WWE with that. Excuse me. Uh, Bailey had a match with Bianca, and no one helped Bailey out. <laughs> they literally sat there on the sideline. So the 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 stories there, the cracks there. When does Bailey get kicked out of Damage Control? I think by Rumble time, which is very very close, because mm. I. The, the, there are two strong possibilities when it comes to winners for the Rumble, and that being Becky Lynch mm-hmm. and Bailey. In all honesty, if Bailey does win the Rumble, I feel like the SmackDown after she's getting annihilated just to ensure that she does not challenge. Or they're going to try to sweet talk her and be like, you know, what you should do is you should challenge Rhea Ripley. And maybe there's a situation where Bailey pulls a Batista from 2005 where she just overhears a conversation where they're just like, we just want to get Bailey out of here. She's too much of a Karen at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're getting, we're getting a baby face Bailey back. That's what they're setting up. It's definitely going to be a different baby face Bailey than what we're normally used to, mm-hmm. but I am all for, Baby face <laughs> Bailey. In all honesty, if she were to turn baby face, and maybe this, uh, I'll just call it the uh, the sky triads. There we go. Because I don't think it's going to be damage control for that much longer. <laughs> um, like they're just being down on somebody, and all you hear is ding dong, ding dong, and Bailey's just on the screen. I'll be like, <laughs> yes, okay. She's using her powers for good now. I love this. <laughs> Yeah, Bailey's gonna need a hug soon. I think that's what's gonna happen. I think <laughs> Bailey's gonna need a, ho- a hug soon. Um, <laughs> the day that happens, I will send her a tweet. Be like, Bailey, sending you hugs. I can also fly to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bailey's gonna need a hug soon. That's what's that's that is what is going to happen with with them. Uh, but moving on here. Speaking of again, big things that could happen. We finally had a face off on Raw between Rhea Ripley and. Becky, the man Lynch, the man Becky Lynch. I'm already sold on this happening by hook or by crook. Becky doesn't have to win the Rumble for this to happen. It can just happen for the sake of happening's sake. Um, Because when Charlotte got knocked out and she's done for the year for the most part, left a giant void, especially for Rhea, because it was set up for Rhea Charlotte 3. And it would have been beautiful. All because, yeah, Charlotte beat Rhea at the Pandemic Mania. Rhea beat Charlotte at WrestleMania Hollywood. Charlotte Rhea three at Mania would have been absolutely unbelievable and fantastic. But now my charge is gone. Becky fits in perfectly. <laughs> Becky fits in perfectly. The alliteration is there. Mommy Man Mania. 
<laughs> what else do you need? I, you're right. I, there's nothing more you can say about yeah. that. Um, Mommy Man Mania is perfect. So I'll say I'll say this. Uh, to your point, I do think that they could definitely circle back to Charlotte versus Rhea. Sure. Because honestly, their both their matches, whether it was the pandemic era or whether it was with fans, they were both really good. They're excellent. So excellent. absolutely excellent. I feel I feel like if they were to like skip a year or two years like they did with the uh, rematch, mm-hmm. I would st- I would still pay good money to see Rhea versus Char- Charlotte three at WrestleMania. I think that it's literally this generation's uh, Rock and Austin at this point. Mm-hmm. It's a new age Bailey and Sasha. Oh yes. It, I mean that's that's pretty much what it is. But I mean this sells itself. Rhea's at the top of her game, and Rhea needed a marquee match for Mania and. Giving her Becky Lynch, who has pretty much done it all at this point. Perfect. This is a true test to see how big of a star Rhea is by going against one of the biggest female stars in the history of pro wrestling, modern or you know, or past. Mommy versus Man at Mania. I think this is a done, no matter what happens at Rumble, no matter what happens at Elimination Chamber, I think this is an absolute done Deal. I'm gonna call this the first official mania match. There's nope, no way there's no way they go against this. I not gonna win. There's no way they go against this. Cause I, I think it prints money at this point. Right, exactly. <laughs> I think I really think it does. Uh but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um but back to uh, SmackDown. Okay. <laughs> listen, Just this photo right here. I love it. <laughs> listen, it's clear power struggles is the name of this episode. And there's no greater power struggle right now between the between the bloodline and Nick Aldis. Let me tell you, Nick Aldis might be um, my favorite general manager of all time. He plays the role so differently from everybody else. He doesn't take crap from anybody, including Roman Reigns, especially Roman Reigns, and especially Paul Heyman. Um, he's made. He's kind of brought back the land of opportunity stick. You know, you saw him talking with Carmelo Hayes. You see him giving people a lot of opportunities. Meechin had a fantastic title match um, against EO. Uh, you, you see him giving a lot of faction titles, a lot of interesting signings. He's really made something uh, out of this. And what's great about this is, is that he's so pleasantly creative and it's good to see a GM that will actually fight back. And it's very hard to see somebody fight back with the minds of Paul Heyman, as well as Roman Reigns. Uh, I also found this interesting uh, in terms of Nick Aldis. When you look at the career of Nick Aldis and Roman Reigns from an accolade perspective, (sighs) Nick Aldis has had a longer reign than Roman as the champion. For who? Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, Nick Aldis held the prestigious title for a very long time, and it's longer than Roman's reign. Um, he's been the face of a company before. Like, he's been the guy. So, like, that's why Nick Aldis doesn't give a damn about what Roman says, because he's been Roman, but he, you can argue he's been better. It's the crazy part about it. So, like, what is the Nick Holders versus Bloodline thing going to come to a head? And also, uh, uh, for you, Nate, is, is Nick Aldis, um pro wrestling's best general manager? Honestly, when I look at Nick Aldis, and I've seen the stuff that he's done so far, it is absolutely amazing. Yeah, you uh, bringing him in was a gamble in and of itself because there's some people that are like, well, who is this guy? Who, who they? And then we have people that are like NWA fans to be like, hey, that's Nick Aldis. Why is he <laughs> doing a suit job? Shouldn't he be wrestling? Mm-hmm. And one of the things that they real probably soon remembered was that, oh yeah, no, he he can talk. He's really good at this. And like you said, he's one of those guys who does not really give a damn what these guys are saying to Roman Reigns coming up being like, I want this done that way. Nick's just like, no, no, I'm not going to let you take over the show that I'm in charge of running. You may be the champion, but I'm still running this show. You're not. And neither is your little lackey, Paul Heyman. So that moment when he, uh, said, uh, 
<laughs> where he said to Paul Heyman, hey, you go over and tell your boy Roman, congratulations, he's battling all three of these guys in a fatal four-way. It was just one of those things where it's like, oh my God, this is a great moment. This is a great GM moment here because <laughs> he literally is just like, oh, you want to ruin my matchup? Well, just realize that there are consequences for that. Oh yeah, you're going to fight all three of these guys since you don't want to fight one of them. You could have just let what left well enough alone, but nope, here are your consequences. Like, like yeah. you said. A GM with actually, balls. <laughs> which we haven't had that in a long ass time. I Not mean, a long time at all. I mean, Eric Bischoff is definitely one of those guys that I would say, you know, he could be a sniveling deal. But when he threw his balls down, it was like thunder. He yeah. knew when he knew when to th- throw down and be like, no, I'm not putting up with this shit. I mean, you could also say that his deal with John Cena, a bit underwhelming. Yes. But at the same time, I still enjoyed as much of it as possible because he literally was like, I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure – that John Cena is not WWE champion anymore. He threw everything mm-hmm. from Chris Jericho to Kurt Angle to multiple ma- matches. He even put him in a triple threat submission match. And what ended up happening was that he did finally get the last laugh because it was the money in the bank contract that finally did the deed to Cena. So it was one of those things where it's like, damn. So eventually he did find a way to end that run. I yeah. mean, it was a little late because he was fired at that point, but still <laughs> the last lingering effect of it. Yeah. But yeah. I, Nick Aldis is amazing. Yeah. I implore anybody to listen to the Nick Aldis, uh, after the bell, he was, um, he was on after the bell with Corey Graves, podcast. And he talks about getting signed by WWE. And essentially what he said was that this is the opportunity that WWE gave him and he's going to do the best with it. He has a, he has a fantastic story about how he got into the business. Um, and he is doing the best with it right now. He is he is a force. He's without a set design. He has made SmackDown really unique, absolutely really really unique. Uh, and it's awesome to see him get treated in such a way. Hopefully he gets in the ring. But at this point, you don't need him at the moment. But I am excited for my contract signing uh, this upcoming week on SmackDown with all four of them and Nick Aldis in the ring. So this should be very very interesting. Uh, also. Nick Aldis giving opportunities and probably the final opportunity for, for Cross uh, and, and Scarlet and now with Paul Ellering and the Office of Pain. They are now called the Final Testament. That is their official name. I like the look of them. I think the name is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Like I said, Either Cross makes this work or he's probably gone from the company, in my opinion. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this faction name, The Final Testament? I mean, we had the Authors of Pain, so it only made sense that they would pick something that was very Doomsday-like. I was figuring, why don't you just call them Doomsday? <sighs> you know, actually, kinda, I think about it, it looks it sounds, it's like you have Judgment Day and Doomsday. That's kind of a clash. It is kind of a clash, but when I think of like Doomsday, all I'm thinking about is the um, uh, what was that? What was that WCW faction? Um, De- not Demolition, my whole that's WWE. Um, it, it, it was the one that Hogan was fighting, was like 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 the Dungeon of Doom or something like Dungeon that. Dungeon of Doom. I, it's one of those things where it's like Doomsday. Were like, you thinking of a Yeti? Um, you know what? One of them probably did play the Yeti. It was uh, wasn't it Nash? I don't know. But <laughs> no, Nash was, a, Nash was a wizard or something. I don't know. It was it was a weird time in WCW. <laughs> yes, it was a weird time uh, in WCW. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those things where it was like you know, Doomsday would be kind of it seems like cool in on paper, but I think in practice it probably would not have worked. I think Final Testament is a good starting name. If they change it to something else, hopefully it's not mm-hmm. something worse. But I'm for it. I'm kind of interested in seeing how this all goes down. And like you said, if this may be carrying across his last attempt at actually doing something in WWE before they're like, uh, yeah, we are carrying dead weight here. We may need to cut ties. It's possible. Listen, they're setting him up for success. He's got fantastic video packages. He has Paul Ellering, tag team managing specialist and just manager galore. Uh, anyway, so, and he has offers of pains. Yeah, people can do his dirty work for him who are bigger than him. And Karrion Cross is already a massive man. Um, so right. one of the most unique factions in WWE 
currently at the moment. Another faction that apparently has a name as well. I cannot confirm this, or I may have to watch SmackDown again. Uh, Bobby and the Street Prophets, who were attacked by the Final Testament multiple, or was attacked by the Final Testament last week. Uh, and they are calling themselves the, I, I believe their name is called the Pride. Pride. Yes. And I mean, we had Hurt Business right there. Uh, uh, smoke business as frets like to try to get that name over. Um, I don't. It's I think so it's so generic, and I don't know how I feel about this. It was kind of like when um, uh, Santana and Ortiz were in uh, AEW, and they were started out as the like a pride, pride and powerful. And powerful. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's like you know what. It's a name for right now, but we're not going to let that be the name for the entirety of the deal. I sure as just, I'll hope not. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I am not a fan of the the pride. It's like, what? What is he like? A lion? Is this his pride or something like that? Yeah, I. It, it just seems very. <laughs> it just seems lackadaisical. Like La- La- lion Lashley. Oh no, man! No. <laughs> I'm a I'm a horrible person. You are. Um... <laughs> I just, I don't know, like, there was, I feel like there are much better names out there than the Pride. Yeah. But hopefully they do something with it. Like I said, hopefully they do something with it. And the one hint he said is that Bobby wants to go up against Roman, which is something when the draft occurred, was something that could, could be a potential of a, of a, of a match. And we still haven't seen that match. And I hope we do very, very soon, but who knows? Who knows what'll happen? Uh, moving on again, more factions on SmackDown specifically. Yay. Like, God, <laughs> listen, Land of Opportunity. He's given a lot of these people different ways to express themselves, and that's all on Nick Aldis, obviously, in storyline uh, perspective. But Santos has pretty much formed another version of Legato because the LWO is still a thing. Santos got his original music back, his Legato music back. Nice. Um, but now he has Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza by his side. And listen, both of these guys, uber talented for a very long time and never got a chance or a gimmick for them to, to really get over. They became like kissing people and they were kissing people in the crowd. But I think they're better off as bad guys. Yeah. yeah. I'll be right back, Ricky. I got to do something quick. Mm-hmm. That's really fun. I can go rent for rent for rent uh, for this. So. Let's move on with this. Um, I enjoy this. I enjoy this. I, I, I enjoy the fact that we're giving Angel Guards and Umberto Carrillo uh, really something to to work with and be kind of heels. They're kind of stuck in like these Latin lover gimmicks. And to be completely honest, were kind of creepy. Uh, to, to for all intents and purposes, like just hitting on people for a while, especially Angel Garza. Uh, but this shows that they're, they're it's almost like they're trying to protect Santos in some way, shape, or form because I do believe Santos will be a big star, but I don't think they're ready for him just yet. And if you look at the SmackDown roster in particular, SmackDown's kind of bloated, so he's got to he's got to kind of uh, hover around for a little bit, maybe in the mid card scene when that kind of opens up uh, with everything. Uh, but I like this position for Santos. Uh, he's kind of got the legato swag back uh, w- with everything going on. So I'm I'm happy with this. And I I'm think Humberto and uh, Angel will be good lackeys for him as he starts to build towards probably a future mid-card title at this current moment. But welcome back, uh, Nate. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I think that this was something that was... I don't know if I would say inevitable, but I think it's one of those things that made sense that Santos had somebody that was going to be his, his wingman really. Mm -hmm. And since it couldn't be, you know, the LWO because LWO is still doing pretty good with merch sales. um, It, it only made sense to bring up two other people. Like you said, having those two, having Garza and Corio involved in that just, Gives them something to do because, let's face it, th- those guys, they were in limbo for so long that mm-hmm. it's finally good to see them finally do it. And we have to remember, guys, that Angel Garza, he just oozes just this 
charismatic deal. He does have yeah, a lot but, of machismo, as, as they would say. And Carrillo is legitimately, he's good in the ring. I mean, you have to remember, he did fight Sheamus for the U.S. title like multiple times. Mm-hmm. So he can go. And honestly, th- there's going to be some star-breaking performances out here. I mean, you have to remember that factions are made to elevate everybody. Yeah. So but even though Santos may be the main deal, you never know. Carrillo could be the breakout star of that faction, or it could be Garza for all we know. Yeah, they actually don't have a name yet. I think they should be they should be named Legato, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, that, that, I mean, they don't. We, we, we'll definitely see uh, what happens with them. And probably the most exciting thing to happen on SmackDown uh, this past week, it is very possible um, that the unfortunate name a butch is going to be no more in just a couple of weeks. You didn't see this, did you, Nate? Um, I think I've heard of this. Okay, so I'll explain to you what happened. So SmackDown in particular, more so than Raw, has been doing a really, really good job of doing video packages for a lot of our talent and stuff. Tyler Bate recently named full-time to SmackDown. Awesome for him. That. Long time coming. He partnered with Butch last week uh, in a tag team match. So we did a video segment with them at like literally some sort of some sort of coffee shop. And Tyler Bate being happy go lucky, like, oh, we're back, we're on the same brand now. Uh, you know, we can really show the world what British Strong Style is all about. I know you've been going through some rough times uh with everything going on with the Brawl and Brutes, which is a pretty much no more. Um, Rich yeah. Holland is back in NXT. Sheamus has a return from injury. Uh, Butch is kind of left on his own. Uh, and so Tyler Bate keeps egging Butch. He was like, you know, you know, it's like, remember when we first started, you know, you had made a name for yourself, uh, you know, with, with the way that you worked and stuff like that. You know, he go and he pretty much is like, what was that name? And it zooms in on Butch's face and then the screen goes black. So it is very possible that bruiserweight Pete Dunn is going to return to WWE and make his debut on the main roster. I am over the moon for this. Um, I understood that is his real name. And I understand that sometimes your real name is not going to be able to be used on WWE for a lot of legal purposes and contractual purposes at the time. However, if this is true, thank goodness they found a workaround (laughs) for for this and for him, because I feel like he's going to be so much happier. Like that face, the face you're looking at right now, that's a bruiserweight face. You know, that is a bruiserweight face. I am I am so excited for him. And if that does, if that is the case, he needs to get his his uh, his entrance music back as well. Uh it's not determined what his name is yet. They're slow burning this, rightfully so, to get us all excited and talking about it on podcasts like we currently are. Um But if it is true, I'm very happy for Pete Dunn. Uh, Nate, I know you've been following him for a while. Probably it's just like we all have, especially when he broke up on the scene and NXT and NXT UK and that legendary takeover Chicago match with Tyler Bate. Oh, no, that was the one I missed. Yeah, I didn't get but, a chance to see that one. yeah but what are, your, what are your thoughts on the potential return of the bruiser way Pete Dunn? I take my money. <laughs> bring back bring back fucking Pete Dunn. I am totally for that. If you have to change his name a little bit, get it. But just Butch needs to go. It's just not working. Yeah. Why they thought that just the simple name Butch was going to be the next Cesaro. <laughs> next, <laughs> the next rock, the next whatever is beyond me because there was no way you're going to be taken seriously as a champion, much less a world champion, if your name was Butch. <laughs> so, yeah. And this dude literally killed it on the scenes as Pete Dunn. He literally was just doing an amazing job just creating, establishing a name, establishing his wrestling style. Um, if I remember correctly, he also had a great matchup with Gunta, a.k.a. Walter, at the TakeOver 
New York show, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that, that was when Walter destroyed his um his streak and it, that's when he won the UK title. Yeah. That that was still a really good matchup. I loved that one and loved the main event, but getting back on topic. Um yeah, no, I'm all for the bruiser weights making a comeback. And even if we just get that name of bruiser weight brought in, I feel like that's gonna help him out quite a bit. Yeah, and let's and let's let's knock it. He 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 had a shit name, but he, he ended up making something of it with the help of the Brawling Brutes. Uh, as Butch, like, we all kind of accepted it for a while, but that was also because he didn't let it take away from who he was as a performer. That's true. And uh, I think that's a testament to him, because sometimes you get you get chicken shit, and you got to make chicken shallot out of it. <laughs> and that's what he did for a very, very long They had some memorable matches. They had the, the, uh, the, ex- like the extreme bar fight. At um at Extreme Rules in Philly, uh, the same night Bray Wyatt returned. That was a crazy match, <laughs> you know. Like they did a lot of good work with the Brawling Brutes, and I'm happy that you know they're splitting up and they're we're kind of potentially getting rewarded with the return uh, of Pete Dunne. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to that official official announcement. Uh, but officially announces that we have a brand <laughs> new, very smiley with brand new teeth. It looks like great veneers there, Obafemi. In Obafemi, the NXT North American champion, he cashed in uh, his breaking out tournament win real quickly, by the way, um, and won the North American title. Dragon Lee kind of wants back. <laughs> um but this, I put this in here because I see Obafemi. I watch him wrestle. This is a scary man. This is, <laughs> this is a scary, scary man. He's a former SEC uh, football player. Uh, he's big as a house, by the way. Like, he he he, he threw Dragon Lee, like, across the ring with ease when he beat him. Um I, I wasn't able to really focus as we think we were doing game night. I wasn't able to really focus on how he was in the promo. I'll have to watch it um, on YouTube or what have you. But if he's any bit of a talker, he doesn't even need to be a bit of a talker. He's got the size. He passes the airport test. He has the look. He's got a Brock Lesnar-like potential to him from what I've seen thus far. He is a monster. <laughs> okay. Absolute monster. He's, he's like... You can he oozes I'm a future champion on the main roster. Like he's got that much with them. We'll see how long he can carry, but I I have I feel very, very good about Obafemi's future from what I've seen so far. Uh what are your thoughts on on Mr. Femi? I think honestly, for a guy who just started making a splash. Started yeah, making he, a splash. He's been signed for I think a year, year and a half. I am. He's finally getting into the mainstream now, so he's finally getting a chance to make a name. Yeah, and that breakout tournament was exactly what he needed to really showcase his talent. And now the fact that he immediately decided, you know what, I got this opportunity, I'm not going to squander it. I'm just going to use it right away. And like I said, we got a new North American champion. Dragon Lee can now go to the main roster and hopefully be utilized very well. And Obafemi yeah, is just going to be going back and forth with Dragon Lee and Obafemi. He's just going to take the North American title and literally bring it to another great level. I mean, you mentioned him being one of these uh, big brick house kind of guys who literally could just throw little people around. Um, I can't think of a North American champion that we've had that was like that other than maybe Bronson Reed who probably did that. But other than him, not like that, I understand the Bronson comparison, but not like that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think that's, I think the sky's the limit with him. And if you've given him praise that he's almost got that Brock like deal, I think he's got a really good future ahead of him. I do. I do. Like, I like, I see him and I'm like, this guy's a monster. Like this guy's going to be pushed to the moon. Um, according to Fretz, it was a good promo. He's got cockiness and confidence of what you need in a heel. Uh, but what you need in anything when you're performing in wrestling. Uh, so if he has that persona about him already, it's probably only going to get better. Um, you know, there's a reason he's on TV. There's a reason they gave him a title. Because once you get a title, you got to be able to speak in some way, shape, or form. Um, even if you have a manager. But the, the fact that he was able to do it on his own, 
shows they got some sort of confidence in him. And I can see that they can do a lot with him um, for a very, very long time. So I'm very interested to see where this goes with Oba Femi and NXT as a whole, especially since by in October of next year, NXT's going to cable TV. That's true. C- CW. CW. Maybe battling with NWA. Who knows? Um, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but they're going to be, and NXT is going to be seen on more households than ever before. For free, by the way. Um, right. On cable TV. Uh, and so I can see him easily being the face of this new era of NXT, um, especially to get a lot of tracks and they maybe start going on tour. He could definitely Ooh. be that guy. He could definitely, definitely be that guy. But ladies and gentlemen, that is it for uh, Kings of the Rings podcast this week. Uh, oh, yes. I totally forgot. Special announcement. So next week is the week of the Rumble, obviously. And usually what we do at Kings of the Rings podcast is we do what is known as our Rumble of Royalty shows. It's one of our bigger shows of the year where we talk about and break down stat for stat, line for line, the Royal Rumble, our predictions. Uh, as we go into the road for WrestleMania. Now, as you guys know, uh, for the last couple of months, we've had a lot of scheduling conflicts uh, between myself, uh, Kayfabe, um, and Willie T, my two other co-hosts that helped us to get to um, this nomination for Best Wrestling Podcast by the Sports Podcast of Watch, by the way. Don't forget to vote. Uh, however, I felt very very big about this and i felt it was very very important that one of our seminal one of our marquee shows of the year has to have all three core members of kings of the rings podcast on it so that's why i'm officially announcing today and we're going to promote it all throughout the week tuesday night 8 p.m a special edition of kings of the rings podcast live Featuring myself, Willie T, and Kayfabe, Rumble of Royalties, Tuesday show, uh, Tuesday live show. We are going to talk all about the Royal Rumble with all of the hosts from Kings of the Rings podcast, uh, as as it should be for one of our marquee shows. So Willie T, Kayfabe, myself, we're all going to come back Tuesday night live here on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube for KOTR and Wrestle. Addict Radio. So please mark it in your calendars. We're going to promote it out. We're going to blast it out. That is what's going to happen. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna have a whole lot of fun on that show. Special edition Tuesday night. Maybe a preview of things to come. I don't know yet. We will see. There's a lot still to be determined in the world of television contracts. Uh, but but with that being said, that does conclude the show. Once again, I want to thank uh, Wrestle Attic Radio brethren of the Bracer Impact Podcast, Nate the F and Great, for joining us, uh, for joining me, not us, but joining me on the show <laughs> uh, this week as, as another special guest host. Uh, Nate, would you like to plug anything? I would like to plug something. So uh, earlier this week, I got the chance to review hard to kill so if you want to go through the full details of how i felt about the show itself definitely check that out on our feed as well as other episodes i've done in the past ladies and gentlemen also check me out on instagram as well as on the twitter that being at real fn game uh one of the things i definitely wanted to do is do a shout out to a couple friends of mine uh josh and zach who have their own podcast and Zach was actually a part of our Discord deal, so definitely check them out. Pro Wrestling Off Topic. <laughs> it's it's really entertaining listening to those guys just chat and rave about a lot of things. And Zach will definitely embellish about how much of a TNA fan he is, even though he, <laughs> has, uh, he has stated that the only reason why he shit on it for so long was because there were some things that sucked him. They said, And he said that the only reason why – we shout out it was because WWE was doing so bad. It's like, you know what? Yeah, because somehow TNA was able to create more memorable stuff than WWE did in those times. So to be <laughs> fair, um, yeah, no, I am looking forward to seeing and hearing from the original trio from the Kings of the Rings back in action again next week. Willie T, the one and only Queen Bee, K Murphy, and the man known as King Ricky Rose. 
You've been holding on for that one for a while. I have. <laughs> <laughs> you really, really have. Uh, I, at some point, I want to get that into some sort of real soundbite and just be totally obnoxious with it. Uh, but that, <laughs> that may be for no time. Also, last but not least, certainly check me out this Friday as well on the Fretzelmania podcast, part of Rest Life Radio, as we review Royal Rumble 2000. Yes, that Royal Rumble emanating from the garden. Um so that is going to be a fun time. I've been making my rounds, uh, you know, guest spotting a lot in the past couple of weeks. And I'm very happy to do that to represent WrestleMania Radio as well as Kings of the Rings podcast uh, in this new year. And hopefully I'll get more opportunities to do so. So it's all this stuff. So with that being said, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 365 Power Struggles featuring Nate the effing great from the Brace for Impact podcast. Be sure to please go check out all of this stuff on Wrestlatic Radio. I have been your host King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets. That's not even hyperbole anymore. I'm actually really back there. B-I-G-Z Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews by some of our fantastic merch. I'm actually wearing a special edition pride shirt uh, from KLTR at the moment. And most importantly right now, please submit your vote for us for best wrestling podcast for the sports podcast awards. The link to that voting is uh, the first link in the description below and the links to everything else, our merchandise, all of our, our socials are also in the description below. If you're listening to us, make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast network, because we are a network of shows. Uh, follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter and wrestle addict radio all one word everywhere else ladies and gentlemen when we come back next week special edition tuesday night rumble of royalties all things royal rumble we're going to start to lay out the uh the floor plan for the road to wrestlemania in philadelphia everybody's back i'm going to be there willie t is going to be there kayfabe is going to be there it's going to be a blast live twitter twitch youtube 8 p.m eastern standard time with all of the kings so until next week next tuesday folks goodbye good night we'll see you soon fuck you slack yeah see you next week folks <laughs> Anywho, let's get out of here. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.